You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Thank you for joining me today on our first house call of the weekend, where we're going to be answering, as always, our community's questions that have come in over the past couple weeks. Excited to get to those. And thank you, everyone, who really has come on within the last month or two months since I've been doing quite a number of interviews, and, and really the podcast has continued to really grow the community. I'm so excited about that. It's the thing that gets me really the most jazzed up in life is seeing more and more people just come on board and listen to the podcast. That's really like my barometer right now of of how I feel that I'm giving back is just being able to reach more people. That's it. And just share with them the message that you can honestly heal from any, any ailment that you're suffering from right now. You really can. I'll tell you why. One other person in your position has done it. And if one other person has done it, that means there's data of how they did it and how we can help you then too. So that's what I spend my life doing. I spend my life searching for that data. And then what I do is I I take just complex data, whether it's on PubMed or reading textbooks. I mean, I'm I'm still a textbook kind of guy. And of course, traveling around the world. And so when I do that, then I have to make it simple. I have to break it down into a simple format that can actually be followed. Because most things in life are just super complex. You know, relationships are complex and business is complex and raising kids is complex and your health is complex. Nutrition is complex. However, if you look in within all of those areas, you'll be able to find that there's about a dozen things you can do that really are the game changers. Because there's a million things you could do, but there's only really even, I would even say maybe a half dozen things that when you do those things, they transform your life, your relationships, your business your health, your body in terms of weight loss or metabolism. And that's what I try to share. I try to share it each and every week on the Cabral Concept Podcast, whether it's a Motivation Monday, Total Wellness Tuesday, a Weight Loss Wellness Wednesday, a Training Thursday. Our Friday reviews are dedicated to the research, dedicated to all those different things going into it. And then on the weekends, I say, okay, you know, what did I not do a good job of explaining? What do we need more help with? How can we help you from a personal level? So, that's what we try to do. Thank you, everyone. I really want to thank you for everyone that's reviewed the podcast on iTunes. If you haven't, and I could ask one thing of you, one thing is if that you could simply leave a review on iTunes, just literally um, go to the Cabral Concept and click the review button. I'll Maybe I'll, I'll actually, if you go to today's show notes, go to stephencabral.com forward slash 724, and there'll just be a little note at the bottom of the page of how to leave a review. Why does that matter to me? It matters because I'm trying to spread this message to more people. That's it. I, there's no ego involved. I, I do love reading. I read every single review there. I really do. I read every single one. But the issue is that you know, with how iTunes work and things work, I understand it. The more reviews you get, the more listens you get, the higher up you climb. And the higher up you climb means the more people that find you and they just find you serendipitously and organically. And that's what I love. It's like, okay, a person tunes in and like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll check out that podcast. Maybe I'll listen to that one. I've never heard of this person before. So that's why, I mean, I really would love it. And so thank you everyone who has reviewed. And, and if you're able to, you know, I, I just, again, really appreciate you doing that to help move this message forward. All right, let's get right into our house calls. The first one today is from Donna. Donna's writing in, Dear Dr. Brawl, thank you for the excellent service you provide. I'm an active 68-year-old female. I'm only on medication for a Meprazol for GERD, which is basically acid reflux, gastric esophageal reflux. And she's also says she has Barrett's esophagus, which well, I'll talk about in one moment, which has my gastro has prescribed for 15 years. So basically she's on an acid blocker. She wants to get off of it. She's been using some of the digestive enzymes, probiotics, and then she did a two week Dr. Ball detox. She has a um, history of lab work. She had a hysterectomy. She gained 12 pounds. She hasn't been on statins, but she has high cholesterol. 
She has some plaque built up in her arteries, not too much, but a little bit. And her CRP is in the normal range. She slowly lost some of that weight. And there's, again, some slight plaque, normal to low risk for CRP. And she's at a good weight, about 5'3", 120 pounds. The other issue she has is toenail fungus. And then what will reverse the plaque and dense cholesterol particles? Sorry, this is so long. Okay, so remember, you'll always get the full question by going to stephencorral.com forward slash 724. Or if you're on iTunes, you can simply click on the podcast description and you'll see all of the different questions. So just in the essence of time, I want to try to get through as many questions as I can. So Donna, the good news is that we can get rid of the toenail fungus. And actually, you can look that up on a previous podcast. So remember, there's now 724 Cabral Concepts. And if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, there's a little search bar. We put that in because of your request. Remember, we're always trying to do our best that we can. I love your requests. And we always try to do our best to do that. So you can go in and you can actually type in fungus or you can type in toenail fungus and you'll see the previous show on that. So let's tackle that one first because it's very simple and very straightforward. So you can have an external fungal-based growth. Maybe you were walking around in a locker room or gym or whatever, and you got this you know, fungal-based infection. It's, it's more rare that way, but possible, okay? So for, that, for topical, now I'll tell, give you your internal as well, but topical, you'll use a little bit of tea tree oil on that toenail fungus. You can also use the Maximum GSE Drops, which I just recommend almost every human keep in their house. That's part of our adult wellness protocol. And you can actually put that right on that toenail fungus. And you'll do that for a couple weeks and hopefully that just clears it right up. So here's the thing though. Usually toenail fungus or fungus, ringworm, any of these things that are fungal based on the external also have an internal component. And that's Remember, the skin is really a, an outlet, a view of what's going on inside the body. So when I see someone that looks like they're aging at a faster rate than they should be, I know there's an oxidative process going in the body. All right, I won't go down that rabbit hole. But with uh, fungal base, I want someone to run an organic acids test. So Donna, I would run an organic acids test for you. And I would say, what's with the external toenail fungus? Is it really just external? Okay, maybe it is. But if it doesn't clear up with the tea tree oil, with the, maybe the maximum GSE drops, then I would say, okay, well, there's some type of proliferation that's allowed for by the internal of candida or yeast or fungal-based overgrowth. So the organic acids test will show you that. Very simple at-home urine test. You just simply collect first morning urine, mail it right into the lab. Uh, We make it really easy for people to do. Of course, we'll link that up in the show notes today. And then if you do have that, then we'll put you on a very simple, straightforward 12-week antifungal. It's called a candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol. I've now used in my practice for almost seven years. And it's one of our most popular. It's literally used all over the world. So we'll help you with that. Okay, now let's talk about the plaque. All right, the plaque and your cholesterol is 254. So we need to work on that. You can run a genetic test if you'd like that will actually show you which allele you are. If you have a four allele, which is part of the APOE blood type. Now, again, you're not going to get this on 23andMe. You're not going to get this on, you know, your like ancestry dog or any of these. You just use a real, a real good lab. That's it. So if you want, get your genetics tested. And because you might not do very well with saturated fat. And I know a big thing right now is is saturated fats and it's eating more paleo and those types of things. Fine. You can be paleo, which I'm almost I'm essentially all paleo, whatever that means. You know, these basically means no grains. And a lot of people don't eat beans as well, but I still eat some grains. For the most part, I'm paleo, but I'm also not eating a lot of meat. Like that's possible. It really is. So anyway, you can all, you, to lower that cholesterol, if you have a four allele, you might have to cut down a little bit on that saturated fat. Again, that would come from meat. It would come from some of it nuts, not, not a big factor. Coconut oil would be one, eggs, those types of things. So again, you can check that or you can just start eating less of that. Like, and then you test your, again, like people can test these things. Eat less cholesterol, eat a lower cholesterol diet if you don't want to see which APOE blood type you are. And then in 12 weeks, get your blood tested. If you're on a low cholesterol diet, you didn't eat cholesterol really that 48 hours or so before having your cholesterol tested and you come back at like 200, well, now you know your answer. You're not, your body right now, now could change, meaning like your genetics can change but your liver processing could change. And what happens is that maybe in the future, you can start to add a little bit more into your diet. But for some people, it's the truth, right? But it's not for everybody. It's about 26% of the population, which I spoke about before. All right, I'm spending a long time on this question. Hopefully it's helping. The other thing that's going to help dissolve the plaque, you're going to use a product called K-Force. Uh, we'll try to link that up today. And that is a vitamin D with vitamin K in it. And proteolytic enzymes. Proteolytic enzymes, we'll link that up today in the show notes as well. Proteo, I'm actually typing it right now and I'm the world's worst typer. So this might take a second, proteolytic enzymes. All right, 
Proteolytic enzymes will actually go in. You take them away from meals. You take them in the morning when you wake up and you take them before bed away from food. What they do is they go in and they help to dissolve that plaque as well. Hopefully that helps. All right. Michael's up next. Michael's saying, I have high blood pressure. Aside from that, I'm an essentially healthy 58-year-old who eats a mostly whole foods plant-based diet. What test do you recommend to determine the root cause? I have to admit I'm a bit skeptical about hair tissue and I have very short hair anyway, so I may not be able to get it analyzed. I know Dr. Dennis Goodman recommends the magnesium RBC to determine how much magnesium is actually making into the red blood cells. What other steps, protocols, products do you recommend to lower my BP? Should they be used without testing first? Thank you. All right, Michael, you always have the option to actually just get right into a nutrition plus supplementation program. Remember, it should never be just supplements. You have to actually work on the nutrition with the supplementation. And, and then a big part of just even the nutrition is actually taking a digestive enzyme. So it's so important that most people take a digestive enzyme for at least 12 weeks just to start to build up their digestive system, break down food a little easier. What does that do? Well, after what it does is it actually allows you to extract more nutrition from the food. And then by extracting more nutrition from the food then you're able to then use those nutrients actually to help strengthen your digestive system. So it's like, it's this beautiful cycle that just keeps going around. You get more nutrition from food. Okay, great. You're able to absorb more of the, the chloride, more of all these things that help build stomach acid. Great. Now you can build more stomach acid naturally. Now you can break down foods better on your own. So that's how it works. And obviously rebuilding your gut flora. That's a big thing too, is making sure that you have enough stomach acid and that you have enough good bacteria in the gut. I mean, people are allowed to be skeptical. You can be skeptical of whatever you like. Just to let you know though, like the Olympic Committee uses hair tissue mineral analysis. The FBI uses hair tissue mineral analysis. So it's be as skeptical as you would like. It's just look at where you're getting your research from. I mean, I'm not going to justify lab tests to people. That's totally their prerogative. I'm not in that game, but I just want you to know, I mean, I got my hair tissue mineral analysis done now 20 years ago. When I first got into functional medicine, I did that. I did the adrenal saliva test for hormone, which I, some people like, some people don't. I mean, it told me exactly what was going on. And then I took that data actually to my, my PCP. And then my PCP is like, oh, well, I don't know. Let me run this test. Then again, then they ran there and I'm doing this in air quotes a test, which is an ACTH stim test for Addison's disease. And then I got diagnosed with Addison's disease. And then from there, just coming into, into the times was myelagic encephalomyelitis. But I would never have been tested from that unless I had done my adrenal hormone saliva-based test. So, you know, in my opinion, functional medicine testing is the best in the world. Blood testing, sure. You can diagnose disease with it. And then I was diagnosed with this disease, which I overcame, but yet you start with the subclinical tests. And the hair tissue mineral analysis also tests for heavy metals, which is phenomenal. So yes, Michael, you can do either. I mean, the, the red blood cell test, absolutely. You could do a red blood cell test to look at your intracellular magnesium. No problem at all. Like ab absolutely. If you feel that's best for you, then you should do that. And the difference is if you do the hair tissue mineral analysis with us, or you do an organic acids test to assess overall gut function, those are probably be the best two for you, organic acids test and hair tissue mineral analysis. Then I read them over. I'm going to give you my recommendations, and then you're going to speak with my health coach to implement those recommendations, as well as learn the what the lab test results mean. Now, if you don't believe in it, you shouldn't do it. Like That's the bottom line. I just don't believe that you should do it. So do it. If you're like, yes, it's going to help me, don't do it if you don't feel that it will. All right. Mel's up next. Hi, I love your work. What are your recommendations for baby's first foods? Conventional advice is fortified cereal, not real food. In addition, if breast feeding is hot, mom returning to work, which formula would you prescribe dairy-free? Also, what do you recommend for contraception following having a baby? I'm not sure what is the healthiest option after being on the pill for 13 years and hearing mixed messages about copper IUDs. Where do you point women to get the best information? Thanks for your wisdom. Okay, I've actually done shows on all of this before. So what we're going to do is link up the show on how to have a happy, healthy, pre perian postnatal pregnancy. I'm also going to link up the baby food one, and I'm also going to link up the baby formula one. So that's because those are all individual shows. Now, the baby formula, I, I did a lot of research, right? So I had two children. I, I Now they're three and five, which is incredibly hard to believe that I actually have a five-year-old because I don't feel like I should have a five-year-old. I don't feel that old. Yeah. I mean, amazing. We went through all of this ourselves. My wife got really into reading all the books as well. And so we would kind of go back and forth on our research. And of course, you know, I know I work with adults, and but I also work with a lot of children in my practice too. It's funny. I started working with children in my practice basically when I had children about five years ago. And so we do all these things. And I'm a big, if you want to look up baby lead weaning, that's a lot of what we did. And then we did, of course, a lot of just pureed foods. We did natural, normal pureed foods. That was a big, big thing. So I'll link up the baby formula. 
I'll link up the baby food. I'll link up the pregnancy. Now let's talk about the contraception. So the thing about contraception is this really, you know, it's a really personal recommendation for what works for you. Yes, birth control, it honestly does. It messes with your gut flora. It starts to mess with your gallbladder and bile production. Some women, they feel great on it. Some women, in my practice, they don't at all. Now, the thing about copper IUDs, sure, like an IUD really, for a lot of women, it does work great. And it's, it seems to be maybe like the lesser of all of the evils. But then you always have to, you have to do a hair tissue mineral analysis and you have to make sure you're checking your, you know, like autoimmune based factors when you have your blood work done, because a lot of women's bodies are basically rejecting this foreign object that's inside of it. And that's important to look at too. I don't recommend the hormone based IUDs, the copper IUD again, like, and some women, it changes mood. It leads to low depression. It leads to a low mood and depression. It leads to anxiety. I've seen digestive based disorders with it where like we were trying everything and everything should have worked. But what they ate, they just started to get bloated. And so I said, you know, I, I think as if you're up for it, we should just do a trial of maybe removing this IUD for three to four months. Now, this is very rare cases. Remember, very rare cases. I work with thousands of people. And a few of these cases, they removed it. Within about eight weeks, they were completely better. And so like, that's one of those things where you can't out-supplement, you can't out-eat, you can't out-anything, right? This IUD, because it's a foreign thing put in the body. But again, would most women be okay with it? Probably, they would. They probably would. Now, the other option is obviously using some type of uh, prophylactic-based condom or something like that, that you are using for contraception, and then also watching your cycle, meaning like understanding that somewhere around days 18 to 22, 23, uh, your body is going to be most fertile. and, And so that might be a time of abstinence. And again, everyone has to do what they feel is best for them. So hopefully that gave you the information that will at least allow you to look deeper into this and then make the right decision for you. All right, Melissa's up next. Melissa's asking, I just found you through the essential oil revolution. Love your podcast. My question is, I've always taken plant-based omega-3s through Chia. I also follow Dr. Gundry. He has put Chia on his do not eat list. What are your thoughts? I'm very confused. Thank you. All right, I'm going to do a review on Dr. Gundry's book. In the future, people have asked about that. I would love to speak on it. I just want to be able to do a, I want to give you the justice it deserves because it's an important topic, but now there's this scare factor with it, which I think is wrong. Why would Chia be on his do not eat list? And it's because it's high in lectins. But I mean, the majority of the world has no issue with lectins. That's the truth. The majority of the world has a very high threshold for the amount of lectins they can eat. Chia has been eaten for thousands of years, thousands of years as a superfood. And it's a very, very powerful food. And it's very healthy for you. It's a great source of omega-3. It's a great prebiotic. It also helps with constipation. Like it's really great for people. Now, there's a few specific people that can't do chia seeds. And I'm over here with my hand raised, okay? I can't. But I'm one of those very strange people that has a really strange immune system. And That is something I was literally born with. Now, I've done so much work to actually help to balance it, and it's good now, Like meaning like it's good. I can eat some chia seeds now, but what if I ate a lot? Well, that would be bad news because I would really start to flare up the immune system. Okay, I'll talk about that. But for the majority of people, you have no need to worry. Now, I will tell you though, the conversion of omega-3s down to EPA in research has shown to be only about 6%. Flax seeds is about 14%. So just keep in mind that you may need to, I don't know if you eat fish or not, you might need to get some omega-3s that way. And if you don't, if you're vegan, well, then you may need to supplement with a little bit more omega-3s. Again, how do you know this? Just run an omega-3 test. That's it. The omega-3 test, it's all part of my big five lab tests that I talked about. The omega-3 test is one of the most overlooked lab tests in the world. Anyone over the age of 40 has to run that test. I just, I believe that. Because if you optimize your omega-3s, you decrease your risk for cardiovascular disease by 90%. I mean, that's, it's a phenomenal stat. How do you not say yes to that? Like, I mean, that's, it's an insane stat. I just think more people should be doing it. It's a simple, you literally just prick the finger at home, you put some blood drops on a card and you're done. Like it's, it's that easy. So that's how you know if you're getting enough. And, and please, like, unless you have, unless you're a person with like just debilitating allergies, debilitating joint pain, asthma, and any of these types of issues, then I would say you're going to be fine with chia seeds. All right, Katarina is up next. My mom, who's in her mid-50s, was recently diagnosed with scleroderma and suffers from Raynaud's and arthritis. Doctors said that she has caught it early, hasn't spread to other areas, just fingers and hands. But I'm wondering if you had any tips on lessening her symptoms and inflammation. I would rather her go to the natural route 
and halt the progression of this if possible. Thank you so much. I love your podcast. Katerina, thank you for writing in. Really appreciate you looking out for your mom. So here's the deal. We can help her without a doubt. I mean, scleroderma, rainids, arthritis. Here's the deal. So she has some type of, yes, inflammatory-based issue. Okay, now we need to figure out what's the inflammation coming from. So she should run an organic acids test and a hair tissue mineral analysis. If possible, I know she probably won't, but if possible, run a stool test. I want to check for H. pylori. H. pylori, definitely indicated in a lot of different types of arthritis and even some autoimmune inflammatory-based conditions. But organic acids test to assess gut function. Why? Because it's implicated in 90% of all autoimmune issues. Now, the hair tissue mineral analysis, because I'm almost guaranteeing that your mom has some mineral imbalances. She most likely has an elevated calcium to magnesium and potentially an inverse sodium to potassium ratio. You'll see that on a hair tissue mineral analysis. She may also have heavy metals in her body, which is really contributing to some of the uh, capillary-based damage. So that is my recommendation. That's what I would do. Only have your mom do it if she's willing to actually follow through on it. That's my recommendation. Meg is up next. Hello, is there a Canadian functional medicine doctor that you recommend? With the exchange, these tests and one-on-one will be a bit too expensive. Thanks for your time. All right, Meg. So I don't recommend specific functional medicine doctors, but what I do recommend is that you can go to websites like the... So I got my degree as a, in the, in doctor, in, as a doctor of natural... Well, basically, it's called a doctor of naturopathy. But then after that, like that doesn't mean that you specialize in functional medicine. Although today's NDs that are graduating from like uh, Southwest, Best Air, Bridgeport, I know I'm forgetting schools right now, other amazing ND schools, uh, they, they are trained more in functional medicine, which is great. But I still, my postdoc work was done in the Institute of Functional Medicine. So if you go to ifm.org, you very well might be able to find a Canadian functional medicine practitioner. Not might be able to, you will be able to. So check that out. Hopefully that helps. All right, we are going to keep that for today's house calls because we're going to answer many more tomorrow on tomorrow's show. Hopefully today's show is helpful. Thank you once again for tuning to the Cabral Concept for making all this possible. I truly appreciate it. Hope you're having a great weekend and tune in tomorrow. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary, and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.